By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create a progress dialog with a built-in timer. Stay tuned to find out how. Hello and welcome to another Thunkable tip. In this one, we're going to continue exploring the notifier component. If you haven't seen the first two videos, we started off by looking at alerts and message dialogues, and then we moved on in the last video and we used the choose dialog. So as you know, the target or the goal for this one is to create a little spinner, a little waiting um, dialog. And what we're gonna do, uh, so usually this would come up when you're downloading information from the internet. It's what's called an, like an asynchronous event, so it doesn't happen automatically. You have to wait for some amount of time, or your user has to wait for some amount of time. Now, rather than kind of uh, getting into that uh, too deeply, what we're going to do is go to our sensors component, and we're going to add in a clock. That clock will have the timer enabled, uh, set to false, I guess. Uncheck that box there. And what we can do is put in um, a couple of seconds here, so maybe 2,000 or 3,000 seconds, just to demonstrate um, this happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the timer on button one. Uh, that'll turn on the clock, like so. So we'll go start the timer. And then what we'll do is uh, go over to the blocks. And in here then we'll have button one turn on the timer. So we do that by going to clock one and finding the enabled property. So you can remember the checkbox that we unchecked was timer enabled. And we'll go into logic. This is where we find our Boolean logic. So we can set it to uh, true. And um, you've got a little drop down here. So let's make sure that's true. And then when the clock ticks, first thing we'll do is we'll turn off the clock. So it doesn't keep happening over and over again. So we'll set that to be false. Like so, and the main focus then is to look at the notifier. So we're going to use this progress dialog. And this is the little spinning one here. It takes two inputs, there's two parameters here that needs to have a message and a title. Uh, now you don't have to write anything for the message or the title, um, but you do have to have two strings here. So they can be empty strings, they can be blank strings, but you have to have strings in there nonetheless. So we'll do waiting for three seconds. And then the title, it can be blank, or just to show you where it appears and what it looks like, we'll put in a little bit of uh, text like this. And then once the clock has um, gone off after three seconds, the important thing with the progress dialog is that there's a pair of procedures. So we need to make sure we have the dismiss progress dialog uh, because otherwise this will just um, display on the screen forever. It won't just be three seconds, it'll be displaying uh, eternally essentially. So now we've got our start the timer button. When we click the button, uh, it says we're waiting for three seconds. If we wait for three seconds, it dismisses. Just to show you what that's like there, uh, there's a way to ignore a piece of code that we haven't looked at yet. So we can disable and enable blocks. So this is the same as commenting out a block. Let's go back here and take a look at it then. We can start the timer. And because there's no dismiss block, uh, what happens is that we get caught in this forever. Um, it never exits out of it. And that progress dialog will never disappear. So even if I'm tapping on the screen, it, uh, it won't go away. Um, now, let me see if we can enable this like so. Uh, if I go back here to my live testing, just because I've enabled it, uh, my timer in the background, meanwhile, my three seconds have elapsed, my timer is currently set to false. And so there's no event here. So I'm still kind of trapped, let's say. So another little shortcut here, another tip is that if you right click on a block, there's an option here that says do it. What it'll do is it will run that. So it'll dismiss the progress dialog. And I was looking at my screen there, so you can see that it's actually disappeared. Um, so that's that's a couple of handy tips there, is the ability to uh, enable and disable a block. So that's like commenting and commenting out um, a piece of code. And then the do it block uh, is also useful then to run a particular uh, piece of code. So we can do it here, let's say. Uh, that'll be popping up on my screen. Yeah, there we go, sorry. Uh, and it, this is again, this is going to run because um, it, it, we don't have a timer. So this will keep running and running and running, not just for three seconds. So we'll have to go back in here and click do it like this to get that to 
disappear like so okay so um that's it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed watching it if you did click the like uh, if you want to see more don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell uh, informs you every time i upload a new video and um if you have any questions or queries about Thunkable or about using the um, notifier component, then please leave them down in the comments. Thanks for thugging and I will see you in the next video.